Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe After Effects tutorial, we're going to build this fun animated digital background effect from scratch. So I'm just working on a new composition of whatever size you want, really. And the first thing we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. It's just going to create a new solid black layer. And here's where we can add our first base layer, which is a fractal noise effect. So I'm just going to be heading over to the Effects and Presets panel during this. And although you can find all of these in their folders, like noise and grain, you can find fractal noise. I'm going to be using the search bar on the top to just basically type in the ones that I know I want. So fractal noise, I'll click and add that on. And this is going to be our base layer to create the contrast that After Effects needs for us to start this animation. So in this fractal noise, the other menu we're going to be working in is the effect controls panel. I can see I've added the fractal noise effect. And I have all these different parameters I can adjust. So you can do different kinds of fractal noise and different amounts of contrast. So higher contrast or lower contrast. And you can also animate it using this evolution section. So as the evolution spins, we get this variation of black and white contrast. So I'm going to leave those for now because we do want to add a couple more effects. The next thing we're going to do is add the mosaic effect. So this is in the stylized video effects folder. And I'm going to drag that over top. And the way that the effects control panel works is the, the things that are added afterwards affect everything underneath. So we've basically created a mosaic out of the fractal noise. But you can see if the fractal noise were to change, this little glass filter over top would also change. So in my case, I want a lot more contrast. So I'm going to bump up the contrast on the fractal noise. And you can even play around with what different types of noise might look like or different complexities. Really, once you put the mosaic on there, it limits the amount of complexity. It limits how much the complexity matters. But I really want to just bump up the contrast in my case. So some of these will work better than others. So you can play around and see which ones would work well. And if you're ever not sure what's going on, you can always turn off the mosaic effect and maybe see what, what is going on underneath or why something looks completely white or black. So in this case, this was getting whited out because it just does that when there's too much contrast. But if I added the mosaic effect onto something like this, it looks a lot more faint. So you have some room to play around and you also have a lot of flexibility. Like if you wanted a square image, you could do something similar to the 1920 by 1080 ratio or whatever ratio you're using of horizontal to vertical. Or you could do just completely vertical lines or completely horizontal or, or little squares. So you're gonna, we're, we'll continue on and you'll see how all this will affect. You also have this sharp colors mode, which adds a little bit of even more contrast if you want to try turning it on or off. Now the next thing we have is the find edges effect. This is going to take us from our solid squares to just the outline of them. But I do want to click invert because I want this done on a dark background. So now we do have our, our white solid squares. And if I change the evolution of our fractal noise, you'll see these squares start animating. And you can also see what it might look like at different amounts of mosaic, small or large amount. Like this is cool. It's, it's like these flashing lines. If I just do one vertical block, if I just do one horizontal block, you can get these flashing horizontal lines. But I, what I do want to do is add some color onto this. So I'm going to add a hue saturation effect. So it's actually under the color correction tool. I can just drag this on top. And I do want to use colorize and increase the saturation up until even those white squares are getting boosted a little and maybe even lower the color lightness so that we really can colorize everything. Under the hue is where you can spin the, the color wheel around and choose which one you want. I'm going to choose this kind of digital green. And lastly, I also am going to add a glow under the stylized effects folder and increase that glow radius just to give it a little bit of that more digital glow. And again, you can go back and forth throughout the, the menu. Once you keep stacking effects, you can see how they all play together. 
and adjust them. So this is where I might want to see what it lo looks like if I lower the contrast. I get this kind of grid. If I increase the contrast a lot, I get these more sparse squares, which can look cool. And I can also adjust the amount of blocks. So we can get almost like this really digital snow look, like this digital camo. Or I can even go for these digital lines sort of thing, or like loading bars. This is what it looks like without the sharp color. A lot more faint boxes appear in this case. And if I actually want to animate this, you see when I play it's just static. I can just simply add keyframes or even just an expression onto the evolution effect. So if I hold option and click on this stopwatch icon, it'll open up my expressions panel so we can add an expression for the evolution amount. And in my case, I can just do something simple like value equals time. So every one second right now, the value will be the current time. So at one second, the value will be one degree, two second, two degree, but that's much too slow because uh, one degree is almost, you can't even notice it. So I can multiply that by 50 or 100. And now every one second, the evolution will spin 100 degrees. So if I play that forward, now we get this kind of digital snow happening. If I wanted to evolve faster, I could do even more, like 200. If I wanted it to feel slower, I could do like 50. And I can I can also animate anything else. I can animate the color. I can animate the amount of blocks that happen. But you can get some pretty cool looks from this digital germ or camo type of thing all the way to these rectangular, these large rectangular blocks or squares that just populate. So this would be cool for some sort of background or background visuals or visualizers. Just an interesting idea for an animated geometric texture. If you did enjoy this tutorial, my name is Justin Odisho. You can check out a lot more in the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.